Hello there, I'm Dave Allen, I'm good and geeky, and today I'm out and about. I'm at an Iberic ruin here in Catalonia, and this is where they used to live and do their stuff, and it's quite interesting actually. They have silos where they used to keep grain, and uh, when they finished with keeping grain, they used to throw the rubbish in there, so there's lots of bits and bobs in there. That's like harpoons and metal instruments and pottery and stuff like that. It's called quite interesting. Anyway, today's video is going to be about how to use tea mugs on your iPad, how to use secure shellfish, and of course how to use NVim or NeoVim on your iPad as well. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we are on my iPad, ready to go. I have secure shellfish on my front page of the iPad. Let's tap and go. On the left, you can see a list of the computers I can log into with SSH. Argo is a Raspberry Pi. Cersei is the MacBook Pro M1. Mel is the iMac, which I have upstairs. And the others are various Raspberry Pi connections. The large panel to the right is a server configuration for my MacBook Pro. For the address, you just put in the Cersei.local, which is the name of the computer, with dot local at the end of it. Port, you don't have to do anything about that. Username is the username that you use to get into your Mac or whatever computer you're getting into. And the password is the password you use when you log into that. But we're going to set up an SSH key because we've got no SSH key set up on this at the moment. SSH keys are faster and more secure. But let's look at some of the other configuration settings first. And I found that most of the things there when you're setting up a new one you can just leave it the default setting. I'll leave the directory to be the home directory of the MacBook Pro. The offline folders, I haven't done anything with that as yet, but I'll make another video about that when I've checked into that a bit more and find out what it does. It is a good idea to have the Files app switched on. That gives you a few things like being able to drag files from the Files app into the command line when the SSH window is open. So for instance, I might want to edit a file on my iPad using an application like NeoVim, which resides on my MacBook, or I can get files from cloud drives such as cloud drive or various other cloud places. Whatever you've got set up in your files application. So in the files app, you can get access to these computers. So if I want to go into Cerse, I've got access to the files from there directly from the files app, which is kind of nice. So when you first set up this, you'll want to verify the configuration. So if everything goes all right, you'll get yourself a command line on the computer that you're connected up to. Let's get this SSH key set up. So what I'm going to do now is go to SSH keys here. I'm going to choose and I'm going to choose this one here, Shellfish iPad. And there's a date on it, so I'm going to use that one. And I'm going to install the public key. And I want to install it on this computer here. I'm going to check. It says public key is installed. That's cool, I've done it already, so I've just obviously redoing this. So I'm going to click on Done. So I can use this key on Southside. So let's go back. It's the one that has got 2310 at the beginning of the numbers there. So let's go back to this one here. And we'll go to Southside. And we'll choose the SSH key. And the one I want is that one there. Okay, so let's log into this. Connected with private key, and that was much faster than doing it with the password. Although there's not a huge amount of difference, to be quite honest. So here we are, connected up to the MacBook Pro through Secure Shellfish. And I can use various command lines, such as LL, which will give me a list of files in that folder. I can use aliases created on the SSH configurations on the MacBook Pro. I have one entitled Lumos, Harry Potter fan here, which will show me all the files, including visible files and folders. So let's type in Lumos and I'll show you what I mean. And that gives me a whole lot of other files that I can look at on there because they're all invisible because they've got a dot in front of them. Let's clear the screen. And I can use Tmux on this here, which is a terminal multiplexer. This allows me to have multiple terminals within the terminal provided by Secure Shellfish. So let's type in Tmux. And you can see that we're in Tmux because I've got that green line at the bottom there. And with that, I can open up another window. So if I use the leader key, which is Control A and then C, so Control A, C. Now I've got two windows open and you can see I'm on window number one. The one with the asterisk next to it is the one that you're looking at. And I can run something in there. So let's let's get NeoVim running. So NeoVim's running in that now. So I have that on one window there. And if I go want to go to the other window, I'm going to do Command A, zero, and now I'm back into the other window again. 
Control A and pipe symbol. That's giving me another terminal window in there. So I can have something going on in this one here. And if I want to go to the other one, I'm going to do Command A, Q and 0. You have to be fairly quick with these keystrokes. So I'm now in this other one over here on the other side here. I could have something running in there like HTOP, for instance. HTOP is a uh, command line tool which gives you details of what's going on with your computer. So uptime, load average, tasks, whatever's going on there. All the stuff that's going on on the computer there. And if I want to come out of that, I've just got to type in Q for quit. Let's come out of Tmux for the moment. Let's to keep this simple. So I'm going to exit out of this one. And I'm going to exit out of this one. I've got to come out of NeoVim first. So with this one here, what I have to do is I have to go into normal mode first. So let's uh, press escape, go into normal mode. Then colon, Q, and then exclamation mark. And that'll come out with that without writing. So now I can type in exit and I'm back into this here. OK, so uh, let's bring in a file. So here are my files over on this side here. I'm looking in CSA at the moment. I don't want to look in CSA. I want to go to files here and I want to get a file off my iPad, which I'm going to edit in NeoVim on the Mac. So let's go to testy. That one I'll do. And I'm going to bring in this one here, test.text. So all I need to do with this here is to drag this and drop it across into this here and it's uploading it so it's actually uploading it to the macbook and i can see that if i do ls and you can see test.txt is in there now where it wasn't before so now what i can do with this is i can go into neovim and edit this so i'm going to do nv test.txt and the good thing about using neovim is that you can do just about everything from the keyboard so if i want to come down uh, to line number three or the line that's marked as number three on there now so I need to come down three lines because this is relative numbers so I want to do 3j and that puts me onto that line there which is kind of cool if I want to go to the end of the file I do capital G and that's at the end of the file if I want to go to the beginning of the file I'll do two lowercase g and that takes me to the top if I want to go to the end of the line I'm going to do a dollar sign that takes me to the end of the line if I want to start editing that now, I type in the letter A. That's put NeoVim into insert mode, and I can start putting other text in there. And I say I've got a thing in NeoVim which will actually suggest words for me, so if I want to type in that there, I've put in other. And it's given me some various possibilities there. So it could be snippets that I want to put in there. So I've got this snippet here, for instance. Puts in the time. Lovely. There are a number of reasons why you might want to use NeoVim and you can't do NeoVim on the iPad, but you can do it on your MacBook, which is why you're going to connect up to it using Secure Shellfish. There might be any number of reasons why you can't get in front of the computer you want to work on. So your Raspberry Pi is upstairs in a different room and you can't get into that room at the moment. I think it's an excellent application, this Secure Shellfish. There are other ones like Blink, which I've tried, but this is the one I prefer. Let's just go into the Files app there. And on the Files app, I can get into Shellfish this way. And if I want to go into, for instance, I want to go into my Raspberry Pi, which is upstairs at the moment. It's called Wally. So it makes it really easy to navigate the files and folders on the Raspberry Pi. So if I want to go and have a look what text I've got in there, I can edit this in Textastic on this iPad. And I say it's there because I've got it from Secure Shellfish. So if I want to do has.txt, for instance, let's tap on that there. So this is a file which is on my Raspberry Pi upstairs. And I can edit it on here on my iPad. Lovely. I'm being really good and geeky on my iPad, connecting into my Raspberry Pi, connecting into my MacBook Pro. And I'm doing it all from my iPad. I'm Dave Allen. I'm good and geeky. Bye-bye now. Talk to you again soon.